Welcome back to my channel, I'm Kat and this is Catadactyl and today I'm going to do my December wrap up. Now, I have not read that many, but I have read a few and I'm really excited to talk about them. We joined a bunch of book clubs, so already I've been to two or three book club, three, three book clubs, I've been to three book clubs and it's phenomenal. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into the books that I have read so far since being in Australia. And all of these are library books that I either uh, borrowed or got at a library sale. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first one I want to talk about is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. Now this is a recounting of the Lizzie Borden murders. It's essentially about how she was found guilty of murdering her father and stepmother, I believe. Um, however, I was planning to go to the book club for this, but I made it that far of the way through, so I'd say that's about halfway-ish. And unfortunately, I just hated the writing style. I just hated the writing style. I found it really, really boring. And it's hard to do when it's a double murder. It's really hard to do. But there are a lot of point of views in this book, and I think that is why it slowed it down for me so much. So you see the same event happen multiple ways, and you don't really... I didn't find any deep attachment to any single point of view. Um, which I think really hurt it in my mind. Um, if you guys have read this, let me know what you thought because I was expecting to really love it because I kind of love, um, especially retellings of murders where they change something, like you get a different point of view, but usually just like one or two. In this one, there's four or five, which I thought was maybe like three too many. So the next book that I read for an, a different book club that I did go to is Lagoon by Nettie Okorafor. So I really love Nettie Okorafor. I've read her before and I think her imagination is just unparalleled. Everything she writes is so fascinating, which is how I felt about this book. It is a combination of fascinating things, which I don't know if work they work together as a story arc, um, if that makes sense. So there are a lot of, I thought, really good threads that she had independently, but how well they all wove together in the end, I am unsure of. So in this, we're following three different people. We're following a female biologist, a male soldier, and a male rapper, and they are all victims of a certain event where waves wash up on the shore and kind of steal them and take them into the ocean. Something happens and then the world is never the same. This happens in Lagos, Nigeria, and a lot of the elements that were so fascinating was actually learning about Lagos and what it's like, and also a lot of Nigerian and African mythology is mixed into this story, which was also fascinating. One of my favorite, favorite scenes was when you meet the road that eats people. I thought that was just a really great metaphor and also a great myth and also just great storytelling. Um, in fact, the whole thing is excellent storytelling in my opinion. Um, there were quite divided opinions at Book Club actually. Some people really don't get on with Nettie Corfor's writing style. Luckily, I'm so thankful that I do. This book was great. Um, but like I said, I'm not sure if it met my full expectations, but I still loved all the descriptions of sea life. Um, the main one of the main characters is a marine biologist. That was like the mythology. So overall, I think I'd give this four stars. It's memorable because it's so imaginative, and so many of the scenes were excellent. But then it's also balanced out by the fact that I don't know if anything was achieved, and also there were definitely some scenes which I thought um, should have been maybe cut. So a total mixed bag, but overall four stars because Nnedi Corfor is brilliant to sum it up. <laughs> Alrighty, and the next book I want to talk about is The Devil in Silver by Victor Laval. This was also for a book club, a book club that reads exclusively weird books, so um, right up my alley. I love some weird stuff, and this did not disappoint. So in this one we're following Pepper, who is kind of your average Joe, and he gets arrested by the police, but they don't want to deal with the paperwork, so instead they just dump him overnight in a mental facility just for holding for the weekend and then, you know, he can be let go. Except that what happens is that he's not let go. He's stuck in the system. And what happens is equal parts fiction, mystery, and horror. Um, just straight up horror. A lot of the horror has to do with the situation. So it feels like 
One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, but in a much darker, more sinister way. It's like if One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and American Horror Story Asylum got like put together. That was this book. And it was very weird, to say the least, which lives up to its name. Um, so The Devil in Silver has to do with um, a system slowly poisoning the people who are within it, and that is something that you see play out. So Victor Laval is, I, it's my first book that I read by him, and I thought it was brilliant. I really liked his writing style. So I think it's about four stars for me, maybe four and a half. I'll have to see how long it stays with me. I just finished it maybe two weeks ago, so I'm not sure how much staying power it has, but I would say, if I had to guess, It'll be around for a while, rattling around in my mind. Um, if I have any nightmares, probably from this book. Um, but it's not horror in any kind of um, brutal way, mostly. There's a little bit of that, but not overall. It's mostly situational horror and talking about um, immigration, incarceration, race, um, and mental illness. So if that sounds like something you'd be into, or if you've read Victor Laval before, and you have any recommendations, let me know down below because I've heard about the Changeling, um, which is supposed to be amazing. And I'm wondering if it is. I also have so many books to read on my shelves that I'm just, I want to read everything and don't have the time. But isn't that just the best thing about life? So yeah. All right. And then the next book up we have is John Scalzi's Lock In. So this was great. This was a book club we went to where it was Secret Santa Exchange. I read this like I finished a few days ago and it was really good. So it's in a society where certain people have a disease um, which is called Hayden syndrome after someone really famous who had it named Hayden. And what happens is your body gets locked in. So it's like you're in a coma, but instead of being in a coma, scientists and um, tech geniuses have made an online world called the Agora where people can interact, but then also they can put their conscious mind into threeps which are essentially robotic AIs that they put their consciousness into and then they walk around as robots. It is an absolutely fascinating concept. And I think the second one just came out in 2018 called Head On, maybe? I'm not sure, but I am going to read it because the world is so interesting and so well done. Our main character is a Hayden, which means that he's integrating with a three and he is trying to solve a murder that has happened, which is also timed with a revolution. It's kind of a crime, drama, political, dystopian, just it's a whole mix and it was so good. So I would give this one four stars as well. So I know that you guys are like, it's, you say it's good, but you're not giving it five stars. I rarely give five. A four means it's like great. A four and a half means it's really excellent. And a five is like, I will be buried with this book. So. That's the kind of scale we're working on. I'm kind of a harsh judge. But yeah, four stars, it was really good. Um, and you should check it out if you also like sci-fi or dystopian. And yes, here you go. Lock in. Um, I hope that you guys like this wrap up. If you do, click the subscribe button or the thumbs up button. And that would be awesome. It helps other people see my videos. And please comment down below if you haven't already. I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day. It's blue skies here and I cannot wait to get outside. So I will chat to you guys later. Bye.